Fame, glamour, success, money and all forms of flamboyance are what you associate with celebrities. But with the recent pockets of reports of Nigerian celebrities revealing their battles with depression, it calls for concern of a thin line between fame and depression, between appearance and reality and many rhetorical questions. It is the desire of most artists to have an international deal and get international recognition. The quest for this fame and self-accomplishment continue with a lot of the big names now relocating outside the country. Nothing seems unchanged as racism is another social menace still confronting them. This leads to depression at the expense of love for their craft. A close observation shows that social media has continuously been a contributory factor. The regular interface with imaginary audience creates a lot of tension and illusions by many of these artists. Recently, many of our favorite stars such as Ari Song, YJ, DJ and a host of others have been vocal about their battles with depression. Plus TV Africa spoke to some key players such as a music executive and convener Social Media Week Lagos, Obi Asika, and a mental health specialist Dr. Kadiri Memuna and a popular Nigerian actor, Arike Akinyoju, who has been vocal about her struggles with depression. I think um, it is. Yes, especially in this part of the world that we belong to, Nigeria, fame here, I think is a major cause of depression. Because human beings are unique, and because human beings are, you know, um, they, we all have our personal journey. They are what we call vulnerability risk factors. People are already vulnerable in one way or the other. Maybe from adverse childhood um, experiences, and then with fame, which is somehow as you grow, it may be a childhood fame because sometimes you see some children, um, they go, grow into fame, while some people are deliberate and intentional into achieving fame. Famous people have to keep up with, you know, entertaining us. Famous people have to keep up with a particular personnel. Famous people have to keep up with, you know, um, with all the challenges, even if they are going through a lot. We do not want to see them down. We are following them for the things that we want to get from them. They are inspiring people, they are influencing people, they are empowering people, they are doing a whole lot. So whatever they may be going through, the society, we don't want to see that part of them, even if they know they may be going through that, that is it. So they have to just keep on being, you know, that person we want to see. We should not be calling talents celebrities. Yes, they have become celebrities, but they became celebrities because of their talents, because of what they do. They are not just celebrities because they exist. So everybody, from my experience in life, all creative people have challenges in terms of putting together their process. And every time, it's like anywhere in the world, if you don't hear of your favorite actor for five years, it's one of two things. It's just A, they're not working, and B, they're not, at this point in time, getting offers. So what I would say is that a lot of people, if you work in the entertainment industries, if you work in those spaces, you will know that it is a high stress, high anxiety business. So therefore, the people who are working in these businesses are constantly seeking for affirmation and for support to see them through what they're doing. So in that regard, if you're in the public eye and you're constantly having to keep up appearances, it can become very, very difficult, especially if things are not going as well as they used to go in the past. There was a time in my life I, I, I passed through depression, but I think it's not because of my career. Because naturally, I'm not the type that, you know, things people say get to. Fine, I feel concerned when they say things or they expect me to live in a certain way and I'm not living that life. You know, I feel concerned and I feel like, but it doesn't really get to me. So if I, I ever had depression, it wasn't basically on, on my career level.
that would be great if I, that would that would really 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 you know help in this advocacy that you know have been blazing the tree in Africa trying to change the narrative and let the you know let it be a movement for people to understand that mental health is as important as our physical health if not more important and for the fact that it's intrinsically linked to our physical health we have to guard protect and prioritize our mental health at every given point in time so if we start seeing the media and entertainment industry putting our mental health as part of their package it may not necessarily necessarily be a department because that's a tall order, but ensuring that from inception when they are setting up that um, um, a business, they incorporate what we call an employee's assistance program. It's a subtle way of inculcating mental health services within your organization. What that just means is that as a business owner and having artists and producing whatever you're doing in the media and entertainment, you and your employees or you and your gang, you and your group have a safe space where you have been able to build a culture of compassion that individuals in that organization can speak up, can speak out, can seek for help from professionals in rendering this employees assistance program. I, I don't actually agree that uh, record labels and statement companies or businesses should actually be having mental health departments. I think mental health is a very, very specialized issue. What they should be doing is being aware of mental health and have mental health professionals that they can relate to if they have issues with any of their talents or clients. Unfortunately, for many years, it has always been stigma here. So people do not engage the topic and they don't discuss their problems. But definitely, a lot of talents and a lot of people in society have mental health issues and issues with depression and anxiety and other things of that nature. So it's important to relate to mental health professionals who can help when you have somebody or friends or family or clients or eight or talents who have any issues at all. You could refer your, you could insist that your eight, your clients and your talents do have regular counseling sessions, do have relationships with um, counselors and psychiatrists that they can have conversations and unload and unbundle any issues they might have. The best thing you, anybody can do is to stay engaged with the talent. So the talent, and that means that understand and know your talent very well. You know, understand what makes them tick, what makes them click, when they are happy, to be happy or to be in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a stable state of mind and frame of mind to enable them to produce their best work. And that normally is, if you're doing that, that means that talent has a strong manager. You know, strong management is key. And that doesn't necessarily come from the label. That could come from the artist side. But the artist manager, the person that really interfaces every day with the artist, a lot of times the label is literally just there to provide distribution, retail, marketing, and finance. One dominant recommendation is for this artist to live in their realities and not all about impressing fans who change loyalty at slightest disappointment by their so-called quasi-demigods, whose foibles are as real as any man on the street. The story of Michael Jackson, who died in 2009, and later with Ustain in 2012, a few of the sad reminders that despite fame and pageantry, one's mental health must not be ignored. Reporting for Plus TV Africa, Ife Oshunkeye.